24. Ah, hello there. Greetings, and welcome to this episode on Geeks First. Let me start this video off by saying what this video is not. This video is not a comprehensive review of all trading card games. That is the word TCG for short. This video also is not a is it worth it to buy video for these following TCGs that I'll be discussing. However, this video is a very interesting, my opinion, look at the variety of TCGs that exist in the ecosystem in the year of 2024. And really, maybe you can look at this as a retrospective of a snapshot in time. So let's jump right in and talk about what I have to offer. Now, today is just after the 4th of July, 2024, and I have taken a long time, mind you, to gather all of the required items together so that I can provide as thorough of a video as possible. I've done hours and hours of research, and frankly, I don't even think it's enough. So, all that aside, let's go ahead and jump to the overhead camera and show you what I'm talking about. All right, we find ourselves here on top of our trusty playmat, which is for the game that I typically try and play the most currently, which is Flesh and Blood. But that's not what this video is about. This video is, in fact, about this, this, and this. Now, what the hell is all this? Well, this is a slice of heaven to some people and a slice of madness to the person who has to edit it, which is myself. Dear God, help me. All right, without further ado, let's jump right in and start looking at what we're going to do today. Again, circling back to what this video is not, this video is not a review of all of these TCGs. But how I came to these TCGs, let's take a brief second to talk about that. There is, in fact, a well-known online card selling platform called TCG Player. TCG Player has quite a bit of very interesting things that you can take a look at. Now, in TCG Player, you can sort by the top games, Magic Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Disney Lorcana, Flesh and Blood, Digimon, and One Piece at the moment. And then you have the other games category, which typically is a lot of the games that are still in production and viable in some regard. Ikora, Alpha Clash, Arden Saga, Bakugan? I'm not familiar with that one. Battle Spirit Saga, Chrono Class Systems, D&D Miniatures, Dice Masters, D&D, Exodus, Force of Will, Funko Pops, Future, Card Fight Buddy, Hero Clicks, Key Forge, Cryptic, Lightseeker, Metal X, MetaZoo, Munchkin, My Little Pony, CCG, Osprey, Star Wars Destiny, The Caster's Chronicles, Transformers, CCG, Warhammer, Weiss, World, Zombie, and others. So, that's a lot. That's damn near too much for anybody to ingest all at once. So, what I'd like to do is I would like to demonstrate just some variety of packs that I have. I have done my absolute best to, well, for lack of a better word, find a variety of these packs at my LGSs or backing various uh, Kickstarters or buying extra packs, such as Nostalgics, which I found at Gen Con last year, Cryptic, which uh, is a game that I believe at this point is out of print, and MetaZoo, which is also a game that is out of print. So, a lot of these games are kind of in two categories. The ones that are still actively in print, which is a bulk of these games. It's actually a lot more than I thought. There's a whole Wikipedia page dedicated to the list of collectible card games. And boy, let me tell you, there are a lot of games to look at. And then there are the lesser known games or ones that have since been discontinued, such as games like Star Wars Destiny, which is kind of the spiritual predecessor to uh, Star Wars Unlimited. Made that game rest in peace. Or other games like Mage Knight, um, Star Wars Young Jedi, Harry Potter, some other various ones that I have here, Star Wars, Star Trek, uh, TSR. Some of these are not necessarily 100% collectible. I'm going to, well, okay, let me rephrase that, trading cards. It's very hard when you start getting into the acronym game of what a trading card game really is and how it actually functions because part of the trading card game moniker is different than the living card game moniker. Now, living card games like Arkham Horror TCG, 
or Arkham Horror LCG, as the acronym should actually be, because I'm very horrible at acronyms, is a living card game, meaning when you buy the box, you get everything in the box. There is no randomization to it. You don't have to go seeking around to find different things. You just get that set of cards, and you can play with that, and typically those will come out like once a week, once a month, once a quarter for you to expand your card collection into that. Now, I have a bunch of those in the corner. We'll start talking about those at a future point in time, because that is something intriguing to me. But what I want to do in this video will be a long video. There'll be lots of timestamps here, but we're going to open up each of these and we're just going to get the initial reaction. And I'll try to be as non-biased as possible. I know that is impossible, right? The woo-woo alarm should be going off because I'm biased, right? I play certain TCGs. I spend a lot of my life, time, effort, energy in certain trading card games, meaning that I am biased. I don't want to be, but I just am. So I'm going to look at all these and I know some of these are not the latest and greatest sets. Some of these are also part of a more intricate series of sets, meaning that when you look at these cards and I talk about the foiling pattern or composition of packs or quantity of cards, you can keyboard furious away and in the comment section below, tell me how I'm very wrong because I'd love to know. There are a lot of people that also would want this information. But as an example, this Alpha Clash pack for The Awakening, which is a nine card pack, maybe that is only a one-time thing because I know they're on set four now, I think. So that's something that's different. I'll try to look up a little bit as I go through each of these, which is where I'll give a little bit of history when the guard game was created, whether it's still in print, kind of the general community, and I guess my thoughts on it. So without further ado, I know that's basically like a second intro, but I felt it's necessary because this video will be a forever content where you can jump around and see the different ones. If you're looking for something specific, find the timestamp, enjoy, now, sit back, relax, and hang out with me as we get to experience all of this craziness that is every TCG I can get my hands on in 2024. Alpha Clash. All right. Let's look up Alpha Clash. All right. So some basic information about Alpha Clash that I'm getting from TCG Player. Alpha Clash has a total of 903 cards available located in the left-hand side of the uh, product finder. So that is under 1,000. Game is fairly new but it is a growing game. There are different rarity levels. Looks like common, uncommon, rare, P for promo, I'm assuming, E, I, A, S, T, I, R, L, A, X, O, and A, R. A lot of those not really familiar with, but it is interesting. It looks like there are a couple of sets, Year of the Dragon, Clash Grounds, Unrivaled, The Awakening, and then The Awakening Kickstarter. So this was the Kickstarter variation of The Awakening, because at the time I paid an absorbent amount of money for this because I needed a pack, and that was all that was available. So whether there's anything majorly different about that, I don't know. All of these are going to be Kickstarter cards. So for somebody that knows better, feel free to say that in the comments. Anyways, it looks like with this, uh, this game is still, you know, I mean, the packaging, like this is the similar style that I'm used to seeing on like a shelf at like a Walmart or Target. Uh, this blister style pack is typically something I would see like a Pokemon, uh, even Yu-Gi-Oh or some other games that you would see in like an LGS. So that is neat to see that uh, the art style here is more of a different style than I personally kind of gravitate toward. This is more of a superhero style of game. And uh, let's see if I can go ahead and grab the excerpt from maybe an Alpha Clash webpage. We'll try to give you the elevator pitch. Alpha Clash is a lore-driven, fast-paced, superpower brawl. You can see that Alpha Clash does have a website, and it looks like they are pre-ordering for set three here. It's uh, kind of interesting because there is quite a bit to look at on this. Uh, they were just at Origins, by the way. That was an event that I was at. They uh, they had an event there, uh, actually ran by a person that I know, Man Sant. Well, I guess he was the one streaming it. I don't know if he was the one running it, but uh, it definitely screams. Uh, superhero, right? Something I'm not super familiar with, but I know a lot of people really like. And uh, this game still is in production as of today and is growing based on my understanding. There are a couple of people that I follow in my game, Flesh and Blood, that I typically am deep into that are actually broadcasting and talking more about this. So that's good. All right, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump right in. I kind of opened this a uh, little bit with a knife here a second ago, and we're going to take a look at the packs. Uh, these packs... Uh, looks like it's nine cards for this one. It is a um, plastic style of pack. It does have a, a UP, well, I guess it has a little uh, code on. There's no actual barcode on this, which is, I guess, interesting. And uh, looks like nine additional cards, five commons, two uncommons, one rare, and one guaranteed foil. Common, uncommon, epic, rare, iconic, rare, legendary, or alpha rare card. So uh, I probably should... Uh, would like to keep one of these booster packs sealed, but uh, 
We're here for the we're here for the content. So uh, now that we've begun, right? I can only go forward with this. I can't go backwards. There is no uh, undoing. So, all right, let's talk about uh, the cards. Let's look at the uh, the cards in general. The card stock is is nice. Uh, it has some flexibility to it. It um, it feels really good. The um, the cards themselves look like they have. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. All right, so the uh, the backs of the cards say the name of the game, Alpha Clash here, and they look pretty solid. So we got uh, a common here. Let's see here. We got another common here, Torque. It's a different version of Torque, so that's intriguing. We have this individual here, uh, another Torque. Wow, that's three Torques. We're, uh, we're Torqued to the max, folks. That's what we're Torqued to. Weber, another Weber's Binoculars. That's cool. Colonel Edwards, look at that. That looks like I got a Stargate right there. That's what I would say that's from. Uh, we got uh, energy absorption. Oh, look at that foiling. Look at that. It's like a popcorn looking thing. That is a, uh, a UC. That's an uncommon. Um, look at that. That's what the foiling. So this is the uh, this is kind of the generality of what I would expect to see. Uh, looks like you get a variety of things. You do look at a, it looks like a guaranteed foil. So that is an Alpha Clash pack. Ta-da! Alpha Clash. All right, next up, we're going to go to Battle Spirit Saga. All right, Battle Spirit Saga, located here on TCG Player, is 1,527 cards. And it looks like, from a set perspective, they have one, they have, I don't know, like a launch event, uh, Saga Promos, Chaos, Donna, False God. So they, they, they've been maybe out for three, four, five sets, looks like. So that, that seems like it's pretty healthy. This game is in print, based on what I understand. It is a Bandai game, and one of the things that people have kind of uh, said recently is that there's a lot of Bandai games, and they're not really sure which ones are going to stay around long term. So do your homework, and uh, if you really enjoy it, you know, pick it up. So without further ado, let's see if we can find the website for this. All right, here we go with Battle Spirit Saga's website. They got a Facebook, a YouTube, a X, or Twitter. It looks like there's a lot of sections on here. So products, they got worlds, uh, game, where to start. Uh, very well thought out, nice looking website, so that's good. Looks like there's uh, a couple of really cool animations here. I'm getting the vibe of like uh, maybe like a mid 2000s like Yu-Gi-Oh style like monster battle type thing. Uh, welcome to Battle Spirit Saga, the trading card game where cards and cores create an exciting world filled with countless strategies. Now, I have played this game and was taught it a little bit by an individual who is very big into the whole Bandai sphere of games. That's like the four or five that they're selling at the moment. And uh, I did really enjoy this. It has a lot of depth to the strategy from what I've gathered. Um, but again, that's just a, a me kind of enjoying the thoroughness of what I was able to do with that game. It's, it's not that the game... Um, you know, is bad uh, because I enjoyed playing it. Anyways, uh, without further ado, this is BSS03. This is the Battle Spirit Saga Aqua Invaders card set. 12 cards plus one token. It's by Bandai. Uh, on the back, you'll see that there's a couple of different uh, bits of information here. Uh, 272 cards in this set. And then on top of that, it looks like there's some barcodes, some different things in here, and a boatload of warnings. Now, this is a uh, plastic pack. So again, not the greatest for the environment, but that's typically what you'll see with uh, almost any game. Uh, there's very few games that are actually doing the paper packs, but we'll talk about that when we get to those games that are doing that. So without further ado, we are diving into Battle Spirit Saga here with 12 cards of awesome set number three. And you'll look at kind of the, the style here. You have a borderless style of effect with, uh, with kind of a cool looking artwork in the middle here. This is a, uh, a white card. This is a red card. Dragno Scout. Yeah, so see, for people like myself that like dragons, that's cool. What is this? Toten something or other? That's cool. The card stock here is, is let me tell you, it's real, real thick in the, the back, right? Like, look at the kind of the subtle foiling on that. I, I think that's actually pretty, pretty sweet, actually. I like that. Deep Sea Fanatic, that artwork is kind of cool. This uh, is a hurricane here. Um, like I said, I know a little bit about this is like casting costs up here. These are power levels. Uh, there's reduction costs involved. The, the only reason I know that's because again, I've played a little bit of this game. Uh, no expert here. So just looking at this from a uh, kind of a purely middle of the road thing. There is some cool, I like how it has like flavor text. That's I I'm personally a fan of flavor text and cards. I it doesn't look like everyone, I mean, everyone kind of doesn't have it. Cause obviously that one doesn't have it, but, um, it's, it's neat to see that. 
The artwork style here, again, very, uh, I would say, almost in the anime category of card. Uh, looks like we're getting a foil coming up here. Judgment Angel of something here. And then we got a standard bearer. This is a uh, UC. It's an uncommon. And then, holy moly, what is this thing? We got a uh, an X Viper Dragon. Look look at that. And then we got an Ant, Ant Man token. It has a core on the back. That's part of the, the gameplay mechanics. So this is an X card. Where does that rate in the rarity system? Uh, 14 X rares. One of 14 X rares. So we got a we got an X Viper Dragon. Cha-ching. Uh, it does not have... Uh, I mean, it has like a raised foiling. You can see kind of the thumbprint, if I can capture the light just right. You'll see this kind of... I'd refer to it as more of a Pokemon style uh, of foiling pattern where you get this cool... Like, there you go. Right there, you can see the the kind of pattern popping on that uh so it's not it's it's not selective foiling or it is kind of selective but the the foils are everywhere so that's that's kind of a unique aspect again the card stock here is is real thick um at the end i'll grab one of each of these and we can do a side-by-side -side comparison but um yeah that's battle spirit saga and next up we have digimon 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 digital monsters digimon are the champion that's all I know. All right. All right, Digimon the card game. Looks like it is still live and well. We have, it looks like, um, yeah, warning, Digimon game website and software without, wait, warning about Digimon gaming websites and software without proper license. Well, that's, that's, I just got a warning. Okay. Greatly appreciate your patrons of our product. Currently have found some websites and and applications that illegally duplicate and use the images from Digimon card game and sites mm, software without proper licensing. Bandai will Bandai will beat you down. Okay, well that's kind of uh that's a that's a disheartening thing to see right when you first jump in. But anyways, so uh Bandai, we got Digimon here. We got a rules about product and different things. It looks like under the products there's probably going to be a large amount of things. Uh this says EX05. So I'm assuming that there are at least five sets from maybe the gathering of this. Um, yeah, so that's kind of interesting. I mean, they got a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here. Wave three. I mean, very. It's obviously it's a Bandai game. So at this point, you know, we're kind of under the assumption Bandai games are doing okay. Uh, let's take a look at it on TCG Player. Digiman Digital Monsters. We're gonna do the kink kink. Okay. All right, Digimon, the card game. I have it by high to low here. I don't know if that's important or not, but there are 5,377 cards on TCG Player, making it one of the higher-rated Digimon, um, well, I should say higher-rated product lines on TCG Player. Um, rated meaning the number in the product line on the left. I'll talk about that in a minute. But it looks like there are a lot of releases. Holy moly, this game has probably been out for a while. One second, let's take a look. All right, Digimon the card game, at least in the latest version, has been out since 2021. Three years. In TCG World, that's probably a long time. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into looking at this Animal Coliseum. Bandai 12 card booster, 74 types in total. Uh, very similar to the other one. You got commons, uncommons, rare, super rare, and secret rare. Lots of uh, lots of stuff. So let's look at the Digimon. Now, back in the day, if I remember, there was, um, when I was growing up, there was a Digimon card game that had a completely different back. And, um, and it did nothing like this. I think over in my little stack of random cards, um, just for sake of, of conversation, um, that, the, the front of the cards looked... Oh my gosh, should have prepared better for this. The old Digimon game, I remember the cards looking like this. And they were made of, like, paper. Like, they were just made really thin. This is a, uh, I guess, a reprint of one of these. I found this um, in a little small collection at one point. And I just, I had to get it because it just, it gave me the nostalgic feeling. So, Digimon, in general, looks like it's been around for a long time. But in the, the game of, I guess, Digimon in this capacity, right? Like, the cards here have a... Um, have a pretty unique, uh, I mean, the card quality, right? Really, really nice. And uh, there's there's a lot of information on these cards, again, but they're very, uh, I guess, unique. There's a cat, Valdramon, Centaurumon. Oh, what is this? Loyalty Deeper Than the Sea. That's pretty cool. It's like an event or something. I don't know. Again, this is, uh, this is one of the games that I don't know how to play very well, but uh, 
I'm sure somebody's going to scream in the comments and be like, you should know how to do all these. And I, you, you literally can't play all of them. But again, this is, this is really neat. I mean, I'm liking the, the way this looks. Oh, cool. We got a, we got a foil. That's a R. It's a rare. Look at that. A foiling on this is pretty sweet. It is a Graplemon. Graplemon. And last but not least, we have a, um, another R. It's a Azulagamon Ace. Az 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 Azulagamon. So, there you go. You got some, uh, got some interesting cards in that. And, um, yeah, that is, uh, that's another Bandai product, but that is the Digimon TCG. All right, next up, we have a new contender to the world. It is none other than Disney's Lorcana. And wow, let me tell you, there's definitely some hype behind this game. Now, Disney Lorcana is, well, it's pretty new to be completely frank. Uh, I remember seeing this at Gen Con, and I remember, I think we got one of the very first packs opened on this specific channel here, where I was able to get into the pre-release event at Gen Con, and we got to open one of the very first packs from the very first set. Now, it looks like in this we have the first chapter, Ursula's Return, Rise of Floodborne, Illumineer's Deep Quest, which is a PvE mode. I know that because I've been trying it out on the side. Actually really cool. Come back to that at some point. Uh, Shimmering Skies, and we're not going to talk about the promos. But it uh, looks like they are on set four, and this, I believe, is set three. Now, Disney Lorcana has a grand total on the TC of the Gs of 1,062 cards. So, again, fairly new, all things considered. But uh, when you start looking at what, in general, is available in this game, it's your iconic Disney characters with a really crazy good backed IP, intellectual property, for those that don't know. So, this game definitely has some, like, actual crazy power behind it, and I believe it is made by a company called Ravensburger. So, yeah, this this is definitely one of those games that uh, if you really like Disney, you can definitely have a blast with this game. Now, this one has little Le Piglet on the front from what I can understand. So uh, this is Into the Inklands. I don't really remember what's all in this set. But again, it's by Ravensburger. This is a 12 additional card pack here. Um, again, very interested in kind of how this, uh, this game will fare long term. Uh, this game, based on TCG Player and some other here, let's look up... Uh, Disney Lorcana was released in 2023 by Ravensburger. So, yeah, very new, within a year. All right, let's jump right in. Gonna rip open the pack and have some fun, because that's the way it works. Ah, yes. So they did keep true to something interesting here, which uh, is these little, like, tokens in the back, and... Uh, I don't remember if this one has it, but you can make these, like, kind of four-piece or, or so, like, unique, uh, oh, what's the word? Four-piece um, art murals. All right, so we got Delilah the Duck. I will find a way. You, if you catch it, you're going to sing. We Like, that's the thing. With it, Disney, I mean, the card stock here is much thinner than other games, but the card back, you know, is very elegant and, and sleek. Um, Robin Hood, a favorite of mine, whether it's that one or just Robin Hood in general. Ooh, this one has a location. This is, reminds me of the old Star Wars Decipher card game where locations you move around. Uh, I think that was something they introduced in one of the more recent sets from what I remember. Scrooge McDuck. There we go. That's fun. Here's a, this is a rare. So there are symbols at the bottom that indicate the rarity instead of a CR and, you know, whatever. Uh, this is a, uh, Pongo. I believe this is a super rare, if I recall. And we got a foil Pluto. So this is the foiling pattern that they chose to go with in this game. And it's kind of a selective highlighting style of, uh, of foil. And, you know, when comparing it to, say, other games, when you look at the foiling, it definitely has a much more, like, kind of poppiness to, like, almost a green uh, component. And I know that, again, you can't necessarily compare every foil to every set because there are some differences in different releases. But uh, Disney Arcana is definitely a pretty solid game. It's super quick and fast-paced, easy for kids to learn from what I remember. Um, you know, I've, I've been able to teach it to several people, and I picked it up pretty quick. So that's Disney Lorcana in a nutshell. Next up, we have Dragon Ball Card Game Masters Beyond Generations. That's a mouthful. The Dragon Ball Super card game was from Bandai. It came out in 2017. Now, 
I'm not really sure. I've heard that there is like either a resurgence or a change because I think there's two different styles of Dragon Ball card backs. When we open this up, we'll have to see. But I think there's a new version that has just came out, and there's this version. Uh, this is B24. I actually could not begin to tell you the difference between the two. Um, let's see if there's a card website. All right, back in the world of TCG Player. I see that there is Dragon Ball Super Masters, which I believe is what this is, which has 9,657. There's Dragon Ball Z TCG and Dragon Ball Super Fusion World. I'm going to assume that this is Dragon Ball Masters the card game because that's what it says here, Dragon Ball Super Masters. Um, so yeah, we can we can open this up and kind of take a look what's on there. But at almost 10,000 cards, it looks like since this game's been out for a while, right, the, the game definitely is still in production uh, from what I gather. And uh, that is what the card back looks like on these. They have the uh, the Dragon Balls. So that's... Uh, oh, I did... Why did I... I missed it. Dang it! I opened it up. It's right here, folks. This is it. Uh, so the, the Dragon Ball game here, the Dragon Ball Super, has these these card backs. So I guess the claim to fame here is, right, it's a really big intellectual property with uh, DBZ, or Dragon Ball. Uh, looks like that is an uncommon... Uh, obviously, Goku, I at least know that name. Uh, some of these, I'm sure, are main stays in the uh, anime but I have not watched much of the anime because I have not spent much time on a TV. But the artwork here does look pretty. Oh, that's cool. 5,000. Oh, 30,000. What's that? Oh, these are R's. R's for pirates. I mean, I, I tell you, it's a feels good for, you know, not knowing a darn thing, right? The foiling and, and getting something like that in a pack makes you feel really nice. I mean, I don't know what 30,000 power is, but uh, it's much bigger than 5,000. So I'm assuming SS Sun Goku End of Clash. I wonder if I can find that. I'm going to type that in. SS. Hey, for a 10 cent car, this looks pretty good. All right. So that is... Dragon Ball Super Masters. That's a mouthful of a game. I do not envy people having to say that to people trying to get them in the game. Other than that, it is a Bandai game, meaning that it's on the Bandai website with Bandai stuff. So I shall not go into the Bandai thing again. Bandai. Next up, and again with a great, fantastico place in my heart. Flesh and Blood. This is a little bit of an older set, but it was a random pack I had laying around, and that prevents me from going out and buying another one, because this video is expensive. So, like, share, subscribe, hit that bell, please comment below, because this video costs a lot of money, time, and effort, and I would really greatly appreciate if you give me some feedback on whether you like content like this. So, Flesh and Blood currently has 5,576 cards in their th database on TCG Player. They are on set 13, 14, somewhere in that ballpark. They have been out since 20... 19 2020 covid era depending on where you look at it and uh this game has been through a lot and is going pretty strong they have a player base um again this is the one where i'm biased towards so please take this with a grain of salt but flesh and blood has done a lot of really great things and you'll notice here this is the first we are seeing a paper pack and this is uh, a new trend in the industry that they really kind of started spearheading i know that magic at one point did it but these ecologically friendly packs i think really need to be discussed further because for the amount of people that open product especially like pokemon is bad at this i know we haven't talked too much about it because we haven't hit pokemon just yet but really i'll be frank these are game changer and i know that has nothing to do with the game itself but i think that the eco sustainability factor of them going toward this is a blessing because we need more sustainably green things in regards to this and i'm glad that this company has opted to do this now this particular set here came out in 2022 uh uprising and flesh and blood is a hero based game it's a it's the kind of a very different style of gameplay compared to um your typical like match gathering but it is a collectible card game and they do have a website and they have a very active community from me just knowing about all that but without further ado we're going to dive in the card stock here is you know about the standard thickness of cards they're um you know have a beautiful card back here flesh and blood right and uh 
and there's plenty of cards in here that I know a lot about that I will just kind of bask in the glory of that's all you got because we did hit a majestic. So Flesh and Blood does have a rarity system that is a common, uh, no uncommons, rares, and uh, now there's other like higher tier ones, but it is nice to be able to showcase a little bit of the higher uh, majestic rarity. And then in the back, you will see that there are tokens which are double-sided. And these typically are your heroes for this game. So you play with the hero and equipment, and it's kind of like a uh, battle royale. You're, uh, you're starting at your strongest and going to your weakest. So the foiling in Flesh and Blood, they have opted to do uh, what I'd refer to as selective foiling. And uh, it varies from set to set, but this is a variation of selective foiling. So... There you go, that is Flesh and Blood in a nutshell, and um, I personally say check out the game, because I'm biased, I love it, has a fantastic community, and I think you'd enjoy it. Moving right along, we have Grand Archive, Dawn of Ashes. Wow, holy bejesus. All right, Grand Archive is on TCG Player. Grand Archive has 1,771 cards. Dawn of Ashes, 12 booster cards. This is an Alter Edition. I don't know what that means. It's probably something I shouldn't open because it's probably expensive. I'm going to take a look because now I'm curious. This is Dawn of Ashes, Altered Edition. $5. Fantastic. I love it. Affordable for everyone. Thank you. All right, Grand Archive is a Kickstarter TCG game that has come to the mainstay. Let's take a look. Grand Archive was from 2023 by Weebs of the Shore. Grand Archive does have a website. It is an active game, and it looks like their website is full of all sorts of very interesting things, products, card databases. Um, obviously, this is what the card's going to look like. We're going to go ahead and jump right into opening this up, but it does look like the game is still around. All right, let's take a look. This is a 12-card booster pack, and this has a lot of variety of things. Four 99 foils. I don't know what that means. 99 foil? I got 99 foils, and a uh, card pack ain't one. Dawn of Ashes contains cards that are primarily for the support of the poor classes. So this, this seems like this is um, almost flesh and blood-like, where it has kind of a the class base. I'd like to salvage as much of the booster pack as I can, so we're going to try and do the whole open from the back and such. <clears throat> Grand Archive. Holy moly, look at the back. I mean, that is some shininess. I, I like that. It's it's kind of a raised texture. That's a, that's, that's a pretty good first impression. So, look at that. I don't even know. Dreamy fairy. All right, we're going to go from the front because I'm sure that's what's intended all right, so we got uh, got some cool looking cards with lots of text on these. So that says fast. There's a uh, in ear. Drowned cut. I mean, there's definitely a lot going on in these cards here, more so than I think I'm actually aware of understanding at the moment. So that's fine, uh, but definitely anime in nature. It, that's very apparent. Um, yeah, so. Did we get any? That's a that's a rare, an uncommon, an uncommon, a common, 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 common. So it looks like we did not get a foil to demonstrate what the foiling looks like in this. But uh, that is Grand Archive. I'm going to imagine Grand Archive foils are not something that are handed out like candy. So that is currently what we got for Grand Archive. If you know more, put something down in the comment section for everybody else below. It should come to no surprise to anybody that the next card game on my list is probably the number one card game that has pretty much kicked everything off, and that is none of the Magic the Gathering. It has been around for a long, long, long time in a galaxy far, far not so distant away, because I'm sure I'm crossing IPs that you're not going to like. But Magic has a very interesting mix of different things. They do have a website. The game is still in production. Uh, for better or for worse, take it or leave it, there are a lot of opinions out there on the status of Magic the Gathering from selling direct versus going through an LGS, all these different things. But um, yeah, we're going to open up a piece of Magic the Gathering. Now let's look at TCG Player real quick. So TCG, TCG Player here has Magic the Gathering, if I click Shop All. 
Magic Gathering has 95,157 products listed on TCG Player. It is actually the number one category in the entirety of the game. And just below that would be Yu-Gi-Oh! followed by Pokemon, followed by Y Schwartz, Card Fight, Vanguard, Force of Will, Dragon Ball Super Masters we just talked about, Heroclix, Buddy, Ultimate, Flesh and Blood, Digimon, WoW, Funko, Final Fantasy, Y Shmetazoo, Cryptic, Dice Masters, Akora, Destiny, Dragon Ball, Grand Archive, Shadowverse, Star Wars Unlimited, Disney Lorcana, Argent Saga, Alpha Clash, Exodus, a bunch of other stuff, things we're not talking about right now. And that is why Magic, which, according to what I understand, Magic the Gathering came out in 1993 and they are on the bajillionth set. We're going to open up one that's from not so distant past. We have Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Now, this is a play booster, and boy, I don't even know how to explain their types of booster packs, but there used to be draft and then collector, and now there's play, and all I can say is, is that it's about as confusing as getting a PhD in rocket science, so if you really like the game, enjoy that, but otherwise, you may or may not even find the cards that you're looking for, because these are like lottery tickets. Again, this is my opinion here, but holy shit, this is confusing. And from an outside perspective, that's one of the reasons I stepped away personally from this game. So while I used to play a lot and I have some favorite tropes and different styles of uh, cards, I will say that, man, I can't even begin to tell you anymore how the game functions. Now, this is the iconic Magic the Gathering back, which I believe has remained pretty much unchanged since 1993. So uh, it's kind of old as time. Uh, looks like in this uh, particular pack here, we are getting 14, no, it's age 14 up. I don't know how many cards are in the pack. It doesn't even, doesn't even say. 14 cards. You're getting 14 cards. So this is a, looks like a token. That's cool. You get a land. That's a plane. That's kind of cool. Oh, we got something interesting here. What is this? This is a uh, Contagion Engine. That's a cool looking foil. It has, that's a neat little... That's interesting. Uh, must be a rare card. It's an M for probably Majestic or, or Mythic or whatever. Murder. Boy, you got a Esoteric Duplicator. That's another card. Look at that. Blooming Marsh. What in the heck is going on? Calm Jumper. This is an interesting, you know, set of, set of cards in here. I would have never guessed. The artwork in Magic, by the way, is is it varies. It's all over the place, but it looks like this is a very Western centric one. And uh, Goblin Pirate, huh? Oh, look at that! So, you know, this is just one little showcase of different things. But it looks like we did hit some. You know, we hit a foil to talk about a foil. Are foils even guaranteed in these packs? Do you even get a foil? Um, may contain. Uh, doesn't even say you get a foil, so maybe you get not a foil. Um, traditional land foil replaces land in one of 20 boosters included 20%. You got to have a PhD in whatever the crap all this says here. I, I'm not even going to try. But Magic the Gathering, again, for as much as it's been around, very interesting overall game. So... That's Magic the Gathering in a nutshell. All right, next up we have another Bandai special. One Piece released in 2022 by Bandai and also available on TCG Player. Now with 2,589 cards, the Bandai card game has exploded onto the scene, similar to Lorcana, and some of the cards are highly sought after. Um, the game plays a little bit interesting. I've gotten to play one of the starter decks against each other, so I have a very small amount of information about the game. But, uh, yeah, this game overall does seem to have some interest. It is definitely an anime game from the fact that it's based around both an anime and, I believe, now a live-action show that came out on Amazon. Uh, this one will have 12 cards, uh, very similar to the other Bandai products where it's kind of probably a random assortment of stuff uh, i don't know oh that's a firework for those guys we're still around the fourth of july <clears throat> all right we got some interesting stuff going on we got a saint mojard 
I mean, these these are there's a lot of art on these with almost no text, so that's kind of cool. Obviously, if you really like anime or if you really like the IP One Piece, this is going to speak to you. If you don't, this may not speak to you. Um, definitely some unique uh, variations of cards in this, so that's kind of sweet, right? Um, oh, there's their foil. Look at that. So that foil goes all over the place. And then what is this? There's another foil. This is a uh, SR. So that is a uh, Robo Lucy. And looking at the odds of getting an SR, it's either a super rare or a secret rare. So it's either a 1 in 10 or a 1 in 2. For those of you that are curious, this is a $1.24 on TCG Player currently. There you go. It does look cool. I mean, the foiling definitely is unique. I like that the cardstock is pretty darn thick as well. That seems to be a general Bandai trend as they seem to be using some pretty stout cardstock. Now, for anybody that might have been living under a rock for the last, I don't know, 25 plus years, we have Pokemon the Trading Card Game. Now, originally these pocket monsters were all over the place and there is more than meets the eye with the entirety of Pokemon. I can't even begin to explain everything about Pokemon. Um, I've played this game basically since the inception of Base Set, which, for those that are uninitiated, uh, that came out in 1996 by Wizard of the Coast and since has transitioned to the Pokemon company itself uh, because there were multiple versions of things. But the latest iterations, at least while we're staring at here, this is a Sword and Shield booster pack. They come in booster boxes uh, typically, but about 10 cards is the average for a pack. Now, this is a little bit more of a, I don't want to say a vintage year, but this is from 2020. This is about four years old. Um, as of today... On TCG Player, we have Pokemon coming in at 26,894, which again would be basically probably the third in relation to Magic Yu-Gi-Oh! So the game has a very thorough, long history. Yes, there is a website that does exist. What's up? We have a brief interlude to eat the pickle fish. The legendary most pickle-esque fish of all time. So, these are really damn good. Yeah, I know. Well, I want more pickle fish now. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm going to skip out on this one. Now, I'm going to let well, the expert... Fish. Well, I want you both. Want more fish or you want me to open the thing? Well, you can bring me fish and I can talk into the microphone <laughs> while you're opening the pack. So, while she's grabbing that, because these are delicious. This is not an endorsement, but holy moly. Pokemon. Been around for ages. All sorts of unique things. They've gone through many iterations of card cycles. This, again, being a four-year-old pack, is now kind of a more of a vintage style. But the Pokemon website has so much to offer. There is league play. Every story you go into, you're going to find this. But without further ado, we're going to bring in the expert in my social circle. The better half. The one. The only. The penguins of the pokey. The one that knows how to open the packs. And can get good stuff, unlike the fat fingers I have that get nothing. Okay, seriously. These these spicy dill pickle things, just, you gotta, you go buy these and eat them. I am short. <laughs> Hello. I, I... Welcome on camera, Pokey <laughs> Penguin. Who's the provider of the big dill? The big Can't dill. see my face the big in dill the is camera. Great. It's okay. It's okay. Well, you don't need to see camera. my face? Well, how do I... I don't have a... Key, uh, I mean, this... Yes. That's where, yeah. So, Pokemon, the trading card game, <laughs> has... Uh, what is it? 15 cards in a pack? Uh, 10. Where did you get 15? Oh, well, I've opened so many games. It's all blending together. It's all blending together. I forget how this works. <laughs> so she's going to try to do something called a pack trick, which is saving the best <laughs> card for last. Probably not going to work. <laughs> but in no, Pokemon, that's a rare. obviously, these Pokemon <laughs> are based on the intellectual property of Pokemon, meaning they exist in the other games. So the more you play these games and eat these ridiculously good dill... <laughs> I'm just going to have to stop this video and eat this whole thing. <laughs> Each of these characters exist in the game, and these are sometimes cartooned versions, sometimes, like, you know, 
various you know artwork styles um you got a nice air balloon here but like in general pokemon I went backwards has a completely addictive... my hearing aids don't like the of what that what do you mean they're interacting with something in this room and they're staticky really in my ears right now oh. mm -hmm. okay So what do you think of Pokemon? Oh god. No, I have the microphone. <laughs> Can you give your thoughts on, on Pokemon? What about Pokemon? I want you to I'm painting Pokemon right now out there in the other room. Pokemon. Can I catch them all? <clears throat> I'm so. very short. Hello. <laughs> Now that I'm five pounds heavier, because I ate every single one of those pickled dills. Hmm, that's really good. That is Pokemon in a nutshell. There is a lot to unpack with Pokemon. And let's just say that pretty much every LGS across, well, I would say mostly the world, are going to carry the big three. Magic, Pokemon, and Yu-Gi-Oh. And honestly, going forward, most of these games especially some of the different intellectual properties that exist, will exist in a smattering of shops. Some might carry more than others, or some might specialize in one and be dedicated to mostly Bandai games. Like, we have a couple shops here in my local area that are exclusively pretty much Bandai only. That said, let's go ahead and take this brief intermission to thank everyone who's stuck around this long, and we're going to begin to dive right in on the last couple of games. We are in the home stretch. We have one, two, three, four, five, six... And some extra myriad, six, oh god, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, we're like, okay, I don't know, we're like fifteen. We might not be halfway. Either way, I hope you're enjoying, because this is going to be a nightmare to edit. Next up, we have a game from 2023 by Bushy Road called Shadowverse Evolve. I actually don't know if this was a Kickstarter game, but um, Shadowverse Evolve does have a very unique, I guess, place or gameplay, because... I do remember at one point or another multiple people talking about this game, and uh, I haven't heard anything bad about it, so that's good. But yeah, there's there's just there's a lot. There's a website. There's some good looking stuff. Um, it's new. It's 2023. On TCG Player, Shadowverse Evolve has 1,653 items. So again, very new in the sake of. Maybe the entirety. I don't know how many sets are out for this. This says uh, Shadowverse Cosmic Mythos. That's what we're going to be opening today. So Shadowverse Cosmic Mythos. This one appears to be eight cards per pack. There are a variety of things on the back of this here. Uh, it's by CY Games. So let's go ahead and jump right into looking at this. I do like this particular style of booster with the the real wide top that's kind of cool um yeah so shadow verse of all that is the back that is a really thick that is a thick o card okay before i even flip any of this over what gives here is there a other cards do you, each card contains eight cards randomly selected from the 177 additional there are 35 foiled versions, bronze, silver, and gold. It's not possible to start playing the game with one pack. Collecting, uh, okay. There is a thick old card, like just a discrepancy in thickness here. So we're going to figure that out when we get there. All right. <clears throat> Looking at the art style and direction here, this is Caster. Um, it's pretty cool. It's very clean looking overall. Uh, this is um, BPO493EN. I have no idea. We got Mr. Full Moon, because it's a full moon outside. I don't know how to say that, so I'm not going to. But that's uh, it's a, it's a lot on one card. Round Table Assembly. It's a spell. Ooh, Dragon Punch. Oh, look at that. That's cool. It's a foil. Is that how the foils look in this game? And then look at that. There's another foil. This is a Grimoire War Cyclone. Uh, it's, it's pretty. And then we got, uh, whatever this is, uh, TO2, Goblin King. 
this is some like board game level thickness stuff. Look at that. So, mm -hmm. no idea. Um, I can attempt to figure this out. What is this called? Cosmic Mythos. Obviously, did not get any of the four or five hundred dollar cards. So. All right, circling back. I mean, this is kind of an intriguing setup of uh, of cards here. The foiling is kind of cute. It's like a, I don't know, maybe anime manga style of uh, card game. So don't know much about it. Don't even know the gameplay, but it does look fun. Uh, it is an active game, and there is a website. So I guess that's two things going for it. So, yeah. Excellent. All right, future editing Jake here. I did want to point out a couple of things. I had some extra random things laying on the side, and I forgot to bring them up. Uh, Pokemon does have some other very interesting products that I just had laying around that I felt like it was worthwhile including. So this is a Japanese style of Pokemon. They're very you know similar to some of the other games. They have the tall uh, crimps, and this one is an older one. But uh, one of the things about the Japanese packs that's intriguing is they're much less cards. So I believe you get five cards in the pack, uh, or in this case, it looks like six. And, um, yeah, the Japanese Pokemon have a different back than the English Pokemon. So just wanted to point that out. So that's kind of something interesting. I at least know that much from the, the Pokemon side. Um, there's also some interesting things like these Trick or Treat, which uh, basically means that in this case here, um, it looks like there is three cards in these packs. And, you know, these are something you can give out. But, you know, I'm sure other games have things similar to this, but it is intriguing to see that, uh, in the case of this, you can get like, you know, cards with a little sticker on it. Uh, but the foiling patterns, this is just more examples of Pokemon uh, that we can interject into the Pokemon section of the uh, of the video. But yeah, the Japanese packs, uh, totally different look and feel than the English packs and totally different back, not the same. So just to call out on Pokemon. All right, now we're going to go to another one that's kind of near and dear to my heart, but um, this one is an out-of-print game. I did want to talk about it. I had a couple of these laying around, and I felt like it was worthwhile to include it. This is Star Wars Destiny. It was released in 2016 by Fantasy Flight Games and is no longer in production. Uh, I do believe that this is kind of the predecessor to a game that will be coming up here in uh, just short order here where we're going to be opening it called Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, but I wanted to talk about this just for a brief second because it also is Star Wars, which opens up to a whole myriad of things such as the old Decipher card games and, and a little brief talk about intellectual property and how that plays a pivotal role and sometimes the success factor of games. Now, Star Wars Destiny here, which was a really interesting game, it involved both dice and uh, and cards, but it was still a trading card game at its roots. And, you know, interestingly enough, I don't, I'm not going to flip that over, I don't know what the rarity symbol is on it, but you would get, you know, cards like this to play in your game, this is the, uh, the backs of the cards, but you would have um, like a, kind of like a hero-based thing. Uh, so I think that's, uh, the card that has the dice is this card here, the A3DO Blaster, I think is what that is. So that would relate to that particular card. And the dice gave a pretty interesting component to the game. Um, I, I like how in, I guess, a different world, this game could have lived a lot longer, but, uh, you know, I don't even remember the rarity. I don't remember. I think green might be just rare, common, uncommon, maybe. That might be how it works on these. Um, I'm sad that Fantasy Flight, you know, killed this game. But I think that in the long run, you know, for better or for worse, you know, we'll see how the other games pair. But this game was always intriguing to me. I did play quite a bit of this. The card stock is, is different, you know. And it um, it's much more paper-like, but I think this was a different world, a different era. So back in 2016, right, this is like, you know, heyday of, of pre-pandemic type stuff. So next up we have Star Wars Decipher, a collectible card game. I actually think it's on here. So Star Wars, the customizable card game was by Decipher. It came out in 1995. Now there's actually another version of this that I don't have much of. It was called Star Wars, the trading card game. I don't actively have any booster packs for that. Uh, then there's Star Wars Young Jedi. There's there's like a myriad of Star, <laughs> Star Wars games. And, you know, there's just so many variations of, of the way they look. But the original, like, Decipher 
card game here, which is what I played growing up, was actually one of the first card games that I ever played in, um, I guess, my younger years. And there was a light side and a dark side. And these are what the card backs look like for that. Now, there is a still to this day, uh, people at Gen Con or at events playing uh, this game and collecting and trading and looking for cards that are in this. So, you know, it it, it amazes me that games like this transcend time, right? Like the power, the mainstay of these games can can hold it. The the fan base that gathers and rallies around these games can exist for years and years and years. And uh, and and these hold special places in my heart, to be honest. So, um, yes, that one was actually already open, by the way. That was uh, something I opened on my birthday a, a little bit ago. But... Uh, I do keep them just because I don't have a lot of them and I don't really want to uh, to waste them. I have to make them last a very long time. So that leads me into the game that we will talk about, which is Star Wars Unlimited. Holy moly. Star Wars Unlimited is a 2024 game by Fantasy Flight. I believe they're only on now going to be set two. It's just now coming to set two. And it is... Full tilt. <laughs> this game is extremely fun. I got to play it at Gen Con. Uh, again, biased alert here, but the game is really fun. There's all sorts of interesting stuff. They also are working with paper packs. Again, huge call out to the paper paper gang that is going to the Sustainable Green. Um, this game on TCG Player, if I were to look it up here real quick, uh, is also one of these games to where, you know... It does not have a lot in regards to the amount of, I guess, time in industry, but the intellectual property of Star Wars in general um, is propping it up. Why can't I find Star Wars Unlimited? Did they, did they move it somewhere? Oh man, they did. They moved it to popular games. Oh, Wow. Yeah, now it's in popular games. Look at that. <laughs> Great. Star Wars Unlimited has 1,151. And they are just now on set two, which is pre-ordering, and I believe comes out in next week. So let's go ahead and pop right into this pack that is more expensive than it should be because they are hard as heck to get hold of. All right, looking at this again, your artwork style here is going to vary. I don't know why I've done that twice now. I've not done it on camera here. Uh, Chewbacca here we got is the hero in this pack, and it is double-sided. And you have these uh, locations, which are also double-sided. Again, I know a little bit more about this game, so I can speak a little bit to it. And then the cards itself, there are different variations of it, but, you know, mostly we'll see what we get in this. These are commons. This art style here varies drastically, but most of it is kind of a drawn... Uh, not photorealistic from like a movie, so that is a definite kind of a delineation of, of art direction. And um, these are definitely interesting overall. Wow, did we get a... Oh, we got a pack here. We got a foil. It's an upside down foil. Academy Defense Walker. So their foils are, um, are different. We did not get something called a... Um, a borderless or a hype like one of the things that people go for in this game is like there's there's missing borders uh and they have a little bit higher um desirability but yeah overall i mean it's a star wars game it's gonna be popular right it's popular around here and uh the foiling is beautiful so i would say that this game is is definitely poised as long as somebody doesn't screw some stuff up or cancel it uh, like ffg tends to typically do with stuff i feel like that game is going to be around for a while so let's keep an eye out for that one <clears throat> All right, next up, we're going to talk about something called Nostalgics. Now, I got this at Gen Con, and they that I'm aware of do not exist on TCG Player, but uh, it looks like they are in the kind of smaller ecosystem. This was one of the... I have a backpack, actually, of this guy here. It's kind of cute. I use it for my D&D &D nights. Um, I really do not know much about this game, but uh, that Lucky Frog is, I guess, the name of it. And... There's just so much interesting with this. It looks like they're only in two sets in. So I have uh, Surge is what we're going to look at here in just a second. That's what's in front of me. This is uh, set two. 
And this game here is, um, you know, basically kind of fairly new. It's what, 2023, 2022 maybe is when this, I mean, at the absolute earliest, would have been when it came out. Um, I believe it's on this list here, you know, S-T-A-L-G-I-C-S. I do not see nostalgics on this list. So I-X, yep, I-X, nostalgia, yep. Not even on this list. Okay, so going to have to go off of this. All right, so basically, Nostalgics here. Uh, this is a first edition, so it looks like they did kind of a first edition Unlimited, but this was at one point, I believe, a Kickstarter game, I think. Oh, my gosh, this pack is so dastardly hard to open. There we go. Look at that. Um, yeah, I don't know terribly much about this game, but uh, we bought a bunch of it at Gen Con because I was just interested because the... The guy was a really good salesman, so if that has anything for you. Let's take a look at the uh, the cards here. They are definitely a kind of a weird mix of maybe like a, a comic style. Like that reminds me of Rick and Morty. I don't know how the gameplay goes with this, but uh, you know, definitely get some cool factor going with this. Not my particular style of art, but I mean, I can see why it's attractive. What is this? King Ferris Dysel. That's interesting. That must be like a hero or something. So, um, Did not see a foil. Cannot comment on uh, foil for nostalgics, but that seems interesting. When portals around begin emitting a deep hum, a team is sent in to investigate them within weeks from the team... And experience resonates and ripples outward from the portal. So, yep, this is uh, this is Nostalgics. I don't have much else to say other than, you know, smaller games you have to be a tad bit more careful on because with smaller games, um, you know, the responsibility of distribution and everything else may lie solely on the individuals versus, like, a more mainstay game. You may or may not even see this in your uh, LGS. So, either way, uh, definitely interesting. The card stock is, you know, pretty pretty decent for what it is, so... That's exciting, but that is Nostalgics in a nutshell. It is uh, in print based on what I'm understanding because, again, they are selling stuff, and I see them actively on Twitter every once in a while. All right, next up is Sorcery Contested Realms 2023 by Eric's Curiosa LTD. They do have a website. <clears throat> they are also on TCG Player with 1,783 cards. They had... Um, I mean, they have what they call alpha boxes. This is kind of like, I guess, Magic the Gathering if you were to focus in primarily on the artwork. And Sorcery Contested Realms, uh, it will be coming out with the next set uh, later this year, actually. I think it's called Arthurian Legends. Or, <coughs> I'm sorry, Arthurian Legends. Thanks, Rudy. Appreciate it. But, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's the next set. This is the original. Uh, this is a... Um, is this a beta pack or an unlimited? Uh, this is, yeah, so barcode. So this is, uh, I got to go to camera. This is a unlimited pack, not an alpha pack, which, again, for players, this is fine. Now, what's neat about this game is um, it's kind of like a board game grid style game. So you can, uh, you have these locations that you play and they, uh, they kind of, you know, have a map. So this is one of the locations, right? You'd have it and then you'd play things on it. There's heroes and everything else. So, um, it's it's kind of a, a good looking overall game. I mean, the artwork here is really the the primary draw behind this. The card stock I think is is pretty good. Obviously, with this one, I'll use the word bias a little bit. I have played quite a bit of this. Um, it is a super fun game. Um, it's tactical. It's exciting. So there's there's a lot of really beautiful pieces of artwork uh, in this, and uh, the gameplay is is pretty fun. So. You know, I definitely can see the draw. Um, there are foils in this game. They're pretty hard to get, actually. Um, I don't think we're going to see one in, in these packs. It'd be nice if we did. But basically, a foil is double-sided and has some really beautiful uh, additional... Uh, like, it has the art on the back of the thing. So, yeah, this game, it, it, it screams nostalgia, right? It screams early 90s is really what this is. And there's... You know, there's two different card backs here, your Atlas and your Spellbook. And, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, Sorcery's, you know, doing really good. They're going to also be at um, 
at Gen Con coming up. Um, some of these, several of these games will be at Gen Con actually. So, Sorcery being one of them, uh, it's definitely a a fun game if I had to say it. And the uh, tagline is an old school fantasy game for players with a rich imaginative tactical nerve and an appreciation for hand painted art. So, that is Sorcery in a nutshell. Fifteen trading cards in a pack. Next up, we're going to talk about a controversial game. Controversial because, well, it's the internet and there's no such thing as controversy anymore. And that is none other than MetaZoo that came out in 2020. MetaZoo is no longer in production and there is a bajillion reasons why it's not there anymore. And I will not go into the speculation world of the why. I will let you do your own homework on that. But suffice to say, I'm glad I'm recording over on my desktop because that is not recording anymore. Wow, did it not flip over? That was interesting. Well, that sucks. I wonder how long it's not been recording. I'll probably be using that one over there anyways, but this is why I did the backup recording. So I knew this was going to be a long video. Anyways, MetaZoo on TCG Player had 3,454 total entries, and again, the game is dead. This was one of the latest ones. This was the, uh, uh, maybe Hello Kitty, looks like, or something or other. Hello Kitty, Crypto Kazuma, whatever. Um, I just, I'm just gonna jump right into this one. There's, there's too much, uh, too much to think of at this. This was a game based around the word cryptids or cryptids, uh, which was kind of an interesting concept. The game environment affected the, uh, the actual game itself. Looks like we got a, a card here, the Kiramori. It's a, it's a promo. So that's a foil. We may not see another foil. Uh, this is the Kiramori cryptid carnival, 12 playable cards, 2023. You can see this game just recently went in to the throes of death, but, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk out there. Somebody might buy it, might continue. Who knows? The you know, world's pretty crazy. This is uh, the back of the, the MetaZoo cards. Their cardboard is very, very thin, by the way. It's not, uh, not in my opinion, the best cardboard. But, uh, yeah, this is kind of the style of art on these, these cards. It does scream, you know, Crombie Bunny. Crom Crombie Bunny. Oh, we got a... Chibi bookmark. There's a foil pattern for you there. That's kind of cool looking, actually. <laughs> Chibi Loveland Frogman. Tiny hug. Oh, rainbow clouds. And Earth Aura. I mean, there's definitely some cuteness here. I'm sure this one seems like it's themed around some cat or Hello Kitty type thing. But, uh, yep, overall, the game in general no longer exists. Uh, but that is MetaZoo in a nutshell. I don't think I can really say too much more because that is just it, but there are plenty of people out there chatting about it. I think that there even is a talk of reviving the game by somebody buying the IP from somebody, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's MetaZoo. Next up we have Universe or Universe. I don't quite know what to call that one, Universe or Universe is on TCG Player. There is 5,842 cards, I believe, universe in general. Let's see if I can figure out... Um... Oh, wait, is it a Bandai game? No, it's not a Bandai game. All right, so this is the Universes card game, and uh, I know very little about this, but it looks like they take other intellectual properties and blend them into their game, so it's kind of like a game system where you play into that so it sounds like this is a pretty popular uh game in general and uh it obviously is still around it is a in production game now this is a uh my hero academia jet burn 11 card booster pack here this one says it's circa crunchy roll circa i don't know what year this was so well, anyways we're gonna open it right up and get into exploring what the universes game looks like what is that that is kind of a cool looking spiral looking thing here um cardstock is definitely very very thin so um yeah this is this is definitely it screams anime it screams uh maybe some sort of fighter type game 
problem solving. That's cool. Glamour. Pro hero. Definitely anime. 100%. Well, there you go. There's a foil. Got a weapon. And we got a cha, a character. This is a, ooh, ultra rare maybe? You are? Uncommon? Something like that? Flame Boy Skewer. I mean, I, I definitely think the foiling is, is pretty. So uh, That is the brief look at cards from Universes. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. It is on TCT player. So. I wonder if I can look this up. F O L D A B O D Y. Fold a body skewer. Fold a body, fold a body, fold a body, fold a body. For those of you that are curious, that card is only one dollar. Still, I do want to call a fun shout out here to the Decipher Star Trek trading card game. I already opened this one off camera a while ago, but we're going to look at it. The Star Trek trading card game came out about the uh, same time as the uh, Star Wars card game, and you can just see like the back then the the design of cards was just totally different, right? Like, look at that. You just cards don't cards don't hit like this anymore. But like this this was uh, this was a different era, right? Like, I don't even know if there's people still playing this game. I know there's tons of people that are buying and collecting it. I mean, I see it all the time at like Gen Con when you look at like cards that you can still sell. But you know, this is a dead card game, technically. Um, let's see here. This is another thing we got from an LGS recently. This is called the uh, TSR um, D and D cards. So like, you know, these were made of like paper, right? Like these, these are not really trading car. I mean, they kind of are, they're individually numbered, but these were like for playing D and D and they had stats of it. But like, this is just, uh, I think it's a D and D like they, they don't make stuff like this anymore. This, this just doesn't exist. And last but not least, we have these Disney premium skybox collection cards here. Uh, this is, this is like an early version of a trading card game, uh, where you weren't really playing the game, but you were trading in the, like, in this case here, um, this I think came out in the year, this says 90, this is Skybox, 90 something, 93, 94, what copyright is on this? 95, so again... This has been sealed since 1995. Yeah, I know. I opened it up. But I just wanted to give you some fun interlude type stuff. We got the Mickey Mouse on the boat. Look at that. That's a big old... Look how thick that card is. That's a thick old card. We got um, Goofy with the football. That's cool. We got Disney Lonesome Ghost Villains. Don't even have a clue. Uh, we got... Toot Whistle, Plunk Boom, Clara Chuck, and a Mickey Mouse the Magazine. Ain't nothing 10 cents anymore, kids. Nothing. But that, you know, that's a Disney product, right? That's that's fun. And uh, we're going to continue with a game that I actually don't know the status of anymore. I think I've been trying to watch on the... Um, this was a Kickstarter game, and I believe it's now out of print. I think somebody has taken over it. Uh, the, the owner, I believe, was Tanner, I think. And uh, this game was called Cryptic. Um, there's a lot I don't know, but the card backs, again, very similar. Um, this game had pirates, or at least this set was pirate-themed, so that was kind of neat. Um, I remember picking this up for my LGS and getting it for this video and not knowing too much but oh looks like we got a doubloon two doubloons look at that you got a oh there's a foil look at that that's kind of cool um felicia blevolent blade but yeah like this is another example of a game that is you know kind of out of print but you can see that the artwork was kind of one of the main draws to like you know looking at this particular game i don't even know did we get anything that's that's a nr L C C I don't know what an NR stands for. Not a rare. Um, maybe a noble rare. Um, 
one randomly inserted foil, pull rates of a noble rare, one in four, Cosmo Hollow, one in 30, Cryptic Text, one in a hundred. I don't think we got anything crazy like that, so. Either way, I mean, definitely a cute looking, you know, the the artwork on here is the draw. I don't know much about the gameplay itself, but this game has also kind of gone to the way of the Dodo Bird, so. Uh, a game I wanted to call out, <clears throat> I don't actually have any here to demonstrate because I don't know where they're at. Uh, it's called Genesis Battle of Champions. That game is uh, gone, but has been revived, and the card backs have changed. I need to look into that, so I did want to talk about that game. There are a couple other games that I have not been able to cover. One is Weiss Schwartz. Um, that I don't have any product access to. Uh, Force of Wills, another one that I need to look into. Final Fantasy, the trading card game, and Card Fight Vanguard. Those are a couple games that I have not been able to get access to, but uh, for those of you that are following along here, Card, uh, card Fight Vanguard... Final Fantasy, Force of Will, and Weiss Schwartz. If I can find those, great. I will try to include something for that. Second to last here, we have Weiss. We, we cross. We cross. We, we cross. We cross. We, we duck. We cross. I don't know much about this game at all. Um, it seems like it's still alive according to what I'm reading. There's 3,664 cards according to TCG Player. Um, don't know if there's a website, but this one here is the Spread Diva. Um, let's see here if we can figure out. <clears throat> All right, so this is a um, this is an English edition. There is just a lot on the back here. Um, so much, so much to unpack. I don't know if there's a good way to really do this other than just rip right in. Um, I don't really know much about this game other than, you know, when I saw it at the LGS, it was definitely something that was, oh my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to open, oh, there we go, I got it. I'm going to rip it and break all the cards inside. Eeh. Dang, I don't like these. So there's, oh, that's cool, look at that, there's some different color backs, but that's the we we cross, we cross back. And every single one of them has a giant thing on the back. All right, we have uh, Fabricate here. This definitely is anime. 100%. Just anime, anime, anime. And we got uh, some sort of foil. That's cool. Foil failure. Um. I'm going to guess... Oh, we got a... That's our rare. So yeah, that's Wheat Cross. Uh, it is a game that's currently around from uh, the Googling. It is on TCG Player. But again, there is just not much detail I have on this game. So if you're interested in it, I'd look into it a little bit more. And we're going to wrap up with probably the... Uh, Last but not least, the Yugi of the O. The Yu-Gi-Oh! 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 has 39,506 cards available on TCG Player. This game, oh my gosh, there's a lot to this game. Um, Yu-Gi-Oh! I remember playing this back when I was in grade school. So there is just so much for the Yu-Gi-Oh! game as a whole. Um, let's see here. Yu-Gi-Oh! When did this come out? Yu-Gi-Oh! Trading Card Game came out in 1999 and is still going strong. They definitely have a website. This is the Blue Eyes White Dragon. I got this because it's a 25th anniversary reprint. Um, this is what I remember opening as a, as a kid. I think probably back in 1999, I opened up some of this stuff. I think the Blue Eyes White Dragon was the uh, the first set, actually. So this, uh, this is definitely insane that the game is still going. Now, one thing to note that's really crazy to me is these cards are not the same size as your typical trading card. So like they are they are actually tinier. I think there's a there's a name for that style. I don't remember off the top of my head what it is, but all right, let's look. We definitely have anime style uh, cards. Boy, this is this is bringing back some old memories here. The little foil symbol in the bottom. But yeah, this is um this is definitely Fissure, Dark Energy, Tripwire Beast, Violet Crystal, Karma. 
I think that is the rarity. I think that's technically there's foils, but that's how they indicate their foil. But yeah, Yu-Gi-Oh, man, that's uh that's a game that is definitely it's still around. It's kicking. There's a store here in Indianapolis that has uh I think a huge huge selection of that. So, that is uh all right, so one other random final thing here. This is a, uh, it's Mage Knight. So there's actually a pretty strong connection to Mage Knight. This is a first miniature game I ever got into. And they kind of came out with these, um, like, trading cards that really were kind of like by upper deck here, whiz kids. But they they basically came in these packs, and they were, they were like the character stats of the actual figurine in the game. But uh, I just wanted to call these out because, like, you know, even these type of collectible cards, you know, sooner or later, like, there's there's fun. Oh, is that a zombie? Yeah, I like this. This was the figure I played a lot of. So, like, these are all the stats. But, like, this isn't a trading... I mean, it is kind of a trading card, right? It came in randomized packs. But this is from 2001, and um, and you could, you could get chase cards in these, but the card stock here was just so much so thick and and they had like raised texture and selective foiling like i feel like this was ahead of its time for as old as these are i got some other various like random cards here um we talked about those we've already seen some of these digimon universes there's a white schwartz card i guess i bought for this video i didn't remember i had it but that's a it's an example of a white schwartz card there's some universes style. I just bought a couple of, like a smattering of, of things. There's that Digimon again to showcase some of the cards in case I didn't hit uh, something good. So like these are uh, Battle Spirit Saga and Shadowverse Evolve, like a higher rare tierity card. Um, this is a Japanese Pokemon. These are some different foiling variations of cards that exist. Uh, here's an old Harry Potter card game and you can see like they had foiling on these so that's a green good vault key and the, the foiling on that is just freaking phenomenal like when i don't even know when this game was but like there's those uh this is more of that young jedi game there's a bunch of you know foils there's jar jar binks and qui-gon i mean um i believe this game is called a cora that game, I believe, is End of Life, uh, Gone, No More, Bye Bye. Um, I believe it's technically um, been been done away with, but you can see the foiling on that. This is a Shadowverse Evolve foil. Uh, I found one of those. This I got at Origins called Mischief Mouse. It must be a newer game. I think he said it's in Kickstarter. It's probably coming out, or if not, it's coming out soon. Uh, don't know very much about it, but that's that's another version of a game that's that's coming real soon or Kickstarter. Uh, I have no idea about this. I found this. It's called Kai Vuru or Kai Vuru. It's from 2014. Uh, my greatest hack, the Hacking the Veil, of course. So, I mean, there's all sorts of card games, right? Here's the I did find. This is one of those Disney, you know, multi-piece puzzles, right? So when you build it, you can have a mural. Those are kind of some unique things that come in some of these games, right? Um, this other game here, uh, that I have is called Primal. Uh, this I remember seeing at either Origins or Gen Con one year, but they have, I was into the pirate theme, so they had this pirate character. That was pretty sweet. Uh, My Little Pony does exist. I don't know if it's a My Little Pony card game or a trading card game, but that's, that's an example of that. And then there's another random card. So that's, that's everything in a nutshell. That's a lot. It's a lot to take in. And let me tell you been a lot to sit here and do this so i think overall all these games have their own merit uniquenesses strengths weaknesses communities and overall i'm glad that they all kind of exist some of them more so than others of course but you know that's the beauty of choice right you have the ability to see what games exist and choose which ones you want to become a part of or which ones you want to dive deeper into so all that said and done, I have selected my four or five games that I'll be concentrating on going forward, but this was kind of my way to showcase a lot of the different games as I've collected them. And let me tell you, there's even more that I haven't been able to showcase here. I have other dead card games and a box of things that I've been handed at different conventions over the years that I couldn't even tell you if they exist, from EVE Online to various card games that I'm sure exist in the Wikipedia for dead card games. Sometimes it's too much, and 
half the time, doing your homework is really the only surefire way to know what's important. But I would say if you really want some games to stick with, pick some of the bigger branded ones that your LGS has a playgroup with and join those games and see if they're something you'd like to stick around with because that's, well, that's half the fun. Joining the community and having a blast with those people that you make friends with because friendships last a really long time and I've met some of my best friends in the card game industry or card game world. So, Well, I could do so much more here comparing all sorts of stuff, but I'm just going to let this be. So if you liked all this content, comment below. What's your favorite game? What are you going to play? Until next time, may your games be fun and your friendships grow.